Okay guys, foot on hip guard. This is uh, definitely uh, after closed guard, and you can make that argument, foot on hip guard is the next most important thing to know. It's essentially your first line of defense. You have your feet on their hips, so they're as fur, further away from you as possible. It's easy to keep them at that distance. It's challenging for them to get the feet off the hips, or at least it should be. If they do get their feet, your feet off their hips, then they should have to fight with your knees against them. If they get past your knees, then hopefully you have them in a closed guard. If they get past one leg, then they get a half guard. And if they get past that, then they're into working off your frames from bottom to side mount. So your feet on hip is your first line of defense. If it's self-defense, you get knocked down, your feet are up. Uh, if it's uh, sport jujitsu, some people like pulling guard and that's fine. It's not maybe what I would recommend for a lot of people, but if you're gonna pull guard and attack immediately, that is fantastic. Or pull guard and sweep or back take right away, that is a fantastic idea. Um, but it's just such a strong position. And for myself personally, I'm a long guy and I'm not really sure when I figured it out, maybe it was around purple belt, the idea of what attributes, what I bring to the table that benefit me more than some other people. So my length has always been an issue. I'm a tall guy. So I've always found front hip guard a great place to stretch people out. And it didn't require a lot of strength for me, which I really, really like. So I was able to keep people away from me and use limited energy and really bend them over. So there's a couple nice setups I have in here. Um, definitely foot on hip guard. If it's something like you're interested in spider guard, X guard, Delahiva guard, you have to have a good foot on hip guard because it just teaches you good tension. Uh, it teaches you good posture and just some a good place to go back to. You can go foot on hip guard to X guard and to Delahiva guard and spider guard very easily. So it's a nice hub to jump out to other places. If someone starts shutting down your Delahiva guard, it's easy to go back to foot on hip guard, reset and go back to Delahiva or go switch to another guard. So foot on hip guard is definitely an essential move. You guys have to know it. Uh, and you should want to know it. It's a very, very strong, it's very satisfying, and you're gonna find that a majority of the moves that uh, are in this little session here, are you're gonna be able to do. So all you really need to do is hopefully find one or two moves from each section, and then find ways of chaining them together. And some of them are, are put out in the video, like hey, if, you, if you're going for an arm bar, you know, they're gonna set themselves up for a balloon if they counter the arm bar kind of thing. So some of them will chain together naturally, and that may get mentioned. And some you're gonna discover on your own, and definitely there's gonna be a lot of moves that are not in this. This is just like kind of a, an introduction to foot on hip guard, but with a lot of moves, a, lot, a big introduction. So enjoy, guys. Okay guys, so before we get into the uh, foot on hip guard, the transition, sweep subs, all that jazz, we have to work on what is foot on hip guard and, and uh, some postures from there. So when I have John inside my guard, it's really, really important that there's tension. I don't wanna be just holding on to his gi and then my feet on his hip. There's zero tension here on John. It's too easy for him to slide these feet off his hips and now there's very little guard for him to work with. And to be honest, if I have no pressure on his hips, John shouldn't really worry about my guard at all because even if my feet do come off, they're not gonna be very effective. I'll just be throwing my legs in the air. So right away, we wanna get a good grip, whether it's rolling up or pistol, what's up to you, and a nice grip on the collar. Typically, the deeper the better, but the collar bone is a nice place to grab. And when you're grabbing, firm grips and then push. And if it means you're sitting up, you're sitting up. But there's tension into John. So the difference between this and this is, is quite, a, quite a bit. As soon as he moves, I, gotta, I have to do something. I have to try and get that pulling motion. This hand is pulling up best I can. And it's probably gonna top out right about here. That's the edge of, edge of my range of motion. So to help that out, I have to push with my legs, okay? If I push a little too hard, it'll fatigue my grips because if I'm pushing that you know, 100 pounds of force, that means my hands have 100 pounds of force in it. So we have to balance it a little bit. I have to push hard enough to slow him down and keep him in position, but not so much it burn my, myself out. So be careful. That and also, sometimes you push so hard that your arm starts to drag, and this gets loose, and then John will just pull his hand back. And that now he's getting pant grips, which is really a big problem. So we're gonna make sure we have good tension. Same thing goes if he's standing. Foot on hip guard's great if he's standing because uh, I can keep John bent over with that collar grip. So this is really important. This is the, what we're looking for, not this. As soon as I relax, his hips can come in. When his hips come in, his head comes up. That's a big problem. If I can get a good collar grip and a good sleeve grip and push 
This should be uncomfortable for John. If he tries to get, bring his hips in, yeah, it's, he's just shoving me across the mat. If he tries to bring his hips in again, yeah, it's, I can keep it very strong here. Notice my hips are on the floor. I'm not doing this. This is a problem. If he brings his hips in now, I'm gonna get dumped backwards. So make sure you have a connection on the ground with your hips at all times. Once the hips come off the floor, they become his property. So watch out for that. Strong grips, strong feet, okay? Next is transitions. Okay guys, so now we're working into transitions. We wanna know how to get the foot on hip guard. Uh, so first one is standing. So John and I are standing up. And I wanna get my grips. Whatever hand I'm grabbing, I wanna put a foot on that side. Okay, I would try to avoid this if you can. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to do this. When you start pulling down the heave guard, it's a little bit better for some people to go this way. But the downside is John can now grab this leg very easily, okay? and possibly take me down if we're looking for points. If I pull guard and he grabs my foot, he gets two points even though I'm on that pull guard. Okay? So likely if John's grabbing me, he has this foot in front. He's not gonna stand, excuse me, very square to me. I want this foot to go to his hip. And like I was talking about with the posture, we need to have good tension. So I have my grip. As soon as that foot goes in, I'm pulling. And then there, I want him to step, whether it's to hook his leg or whatever it is. I want to get a good I want to keep them off balance a little bit. I want him to make an adjustment step if I can. So I don't want to step straight backwards because that's easy for him to defend. I want to step and arc a little bit to, a certain, to the side. So when I get my grip with John here, and I got that sleeve grip, I'm going to step this foot onto his hip and I'll spin out this way. Okay. Now, this is getting me into a good position. John had to step and I'm already starting to attack his arm. So I want him to, make, uh, to worry about his balance. So, Turning to the side is important. Getting the, that proper foot on the hip is a little bit easier. If John is grabbing my collar with his right hand, this foot should be in front, okay? It should not be this way. That's more of a judo thing. Uh, sorry, this is a judo lesson. Judo people don't do this. Power side, power leg. They're not gonna crisscross, okay? It's awkward for the torso. Jiu-jitsu people will break those rules because they don't have that understanding of judo sometimes. So they might go crisscross, but this makes them weak. So you should be really kind of shaking people around in that case. So this is what they should be doing. When John has this foot in front, this one has more of a pocket, that angle here to put my foot in, than this back leg. This back leg's a little straighter. When people try to put their foot on the back leg, it's a little easier to shuck, shuck it off the hip. So watch out for that. Um, next, going from guard. So just for, so you can close guard. So first thing is grips. Uh, ideally, I don't want John to have his, so I want to try and break this grip if I can. And I want to call a grip as high as comfortable, but the higher I go, the more aware John is going to be of my grip, and more likely he should be trying to break this grip right away. So that's kind of a bit of an issue. If I grab a little bit lower, right at the collarbone, I like that as a sweet spot, because uh, it's nice for some chokes. This seems to be pretty good. Now, when I open my guard, try to avoid this, putting that foot on the floor, to get that knee in. It'd be great if you can squeeze your knees together, turn onto your side and put that knee in, and open it up from the hip, and then you can slide this one up, or you can slide it in. It's up to you. Uh, I prefer foot on the outside. I like having the arm in the middle, but that's gonna be a little bit of preference. Some people like this grip, and then start switching to like a spider guard kind of position. So again, when you have that guard, don't put the foot on the floor. Get a nice grip. Squeeze your knees a bit, and now watch my big toe here. I'm going to turn it in, and that's going to help me pull or uh, get onto my side. Now my knee comes in. I'm pulling with this hand, so I'm not doing this. As soon as my guard opens, John's job should be to get his elbows in front of his hips right away. And now that's going to be a huge problem because obviously he's going to go two hands under. So to stop that or to help with that, if I can pull with this hand, it'll keep that pocket open and this leg is gonna go underneath this elbow best I can to stretch it out. Now this is nice to slide up. Try to avoid big arcing motions. Try to slide up his body. Okay, so now you get into a nice foot on position, foot on hip position from close guard. From butterfly guard, we're gonna get John moving around a little bit. So in butterfly guard, I should have my underhooks or if I'm flat, I need to get to my underhooks and then sit up. So if I'm right here, good. I got my underhooks, pull John forward, 
I push him away and then I'm going to go the front hip guard right away. Now if he stands, he's gonna, he might be, he stands, uh, maybe he goes back onto his knees. So again, I'm flat, his head down, good, head's down. I pull him forward, kick him away, and I'm going right to my grips and feet on hips, okay? Uh, from half guard, similar idea, we were talking about half guard, whoops, keeping that knee in, front on hip guard works straight from the half guard, you can just get that knee shield, okay? Get your grips, push on that leg, pull your other leg out, okay? Sometimes they might sit on your ankle a little bit, so it might be a little push, knee comes in, and now my foot is on his foot, but I can slide it up. So we'll turn to the side a bit. So my foot is sitting between his leg and his, his, uh, his calf and his hamstring, okay? So when I push, I'm gonna try and pull best I can, but I won't be able to stop him, so I can just bring my knee up. There, this is a sweep almost in itself. My foot goes here, and then onto the, the other hip. Break, or break the grips and look for the lapel if you like going for the lapel, or keep it on the sleeves. For del heva guard. So if John's standing, a little easier to start getting your del heva's from here. I'm here. John starts trying to break this, this grip I have by pushing his knee into my leg, oops. And when he pushes his knee into my thigh, or my hamstring, my, my legs don't want to come off. As soon as that happens, I have to realize it's happening, and I push with that other leg to spin underneath. So now I can get to my Del Heva position where they're going low or high with it, okay, or in, or on this side. So if we switch sides so you can see the other part. Foot on hip guard, okay. John's bringing this knee in to try and break that foot off. There, I push with my right foot, spin and hook comes in. Then I'm gonna go here and grab the foot. So if I'm looking for Deli Eva guard, that's great. Or looking for going behind, that's great, okay? And uh, X guard. I've got a couple more here. Uh, we'll go from standing X guard. Some of the positions you'll see, like going Deli Eva when a guy's kneeling on the floor isn't gonna be very useful. Uh, but from here, from X guard, I'm looking to try and give a little bit of a pull and to keep that leg through, okay? This one's definitely gonna be a little challenging to do it slow when you're standing, but I wanna get underneath this leg and I need this leg underneath his leg. So I'm gonna push, hook. There's tension here that I gotta be careful. Now I'm gonna pull and go underneath. As soon as I go underneath, this shin's kicking him that way, okay? Cause he's right here on my bicep. I don't want this, I want him up on my neck. So it's right here. This foot kicks in and I kick him that way. This is gonna be much easier for me to off balance John. Okay? And lastly, um, you got foot on hip guard, going to, uh, John's on his knees, it could be standing too, going to uh, leg lasso. If John's here, sorry, here, and he's grabbing my pants, you can go both knees, that's fine. Okay, I wanna break these grips, so I'm gonna get pushed with this leg, kick this leg off to the side, break that grip, and bring that foot in for the leg lasso. Same thing if he's standing. If he's standing and he's grabbing my pants, this is a problem because he's starting to nullify what I'm doing. So I push with my right foot, left, left leg goes off to the side, break that grip, and then foot comes in for your leg lasso, okay? Um, you're gonna find foot on hip guard's gonna have a lot of, uh, like that's for sure not everything. That's just a bunch of stuff but it's gonna have a lot of variety and it's gonna be depending on what you like and your attributes and your partner and their skill set. So it's a little bit of an idea of what you can do on going to uh, foot on hip guard and going from foot on hip guard to another position. Okay, so now for standing up. Now I know a lot of people aren't a big fan maybe of standing, especially if you're the one that's pulling guard, it might not make sense to you to want to stand up right away. Um, sometimes you have to. If it's self-defense, you need to get up and get, get away if you can. Um, the idea of standing is super, super important because sometimes you get someone who's really good at stifling your gain and the process of you standing might be enough to start that sweep or the submission or the back take that you're actually looking to set up. So standing up is really, really important and it's super, super under, underutilized. Um, it's easy to get to like a pro belt level and 
stall a lot of people out. And the, the defending is simpler than the attacking. So if he's got a really, really good base, and all I'm looking for is sweep, 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 and he's aware of that, and he's had, got a good base skill set, he can shut down a lot of that, those moves. Me standing up will, will start to mess him up a little bit. So I have John in my, in my guard. Okay, from right here, um, usually the reason you're standing up is because there's a little bit of pressure that way. If pressure is coming forward, then he's walking into sweeps this way and submissions this way and some back takes. If he's trying to get away from me, there's a couple sweeps when he's on his knees. Uh, mostly it's standing while sweeping backwards. Uh, there's not a lot of submissions if he's going away from me. It's going to be harder for me to catch them. And there's not a lot of back takes again if he's going away from me. It's going to be harder for me to catch him. So usually you get that because he starts to hunker down and sit. So when he's sitting there, his elbow turned in, I could feel his weight shift down and then back. <clears throat> so when I feel that, I'm just gonna try and get that little tug and then push, and then push away up, okay? Now, if he stands up, he stands up, but I don't want him to if I can help it. If I can help it, I wanna try and keep weight on that arm to keep him bent over. Because the last thing I wanna do when I'm with John is start, start standing up where it's a fair match and we're both standing in good posture. But if I could start a match where he's standing and I'm standing, but he's bent over, well, that's a little bit more interesting to me. He's going to be a little bit more exhausted that way. So for on this side, I got that position. He starts to hunker down and elbows come in. I'll give it a little tug and then push. And now here. Now, if I can stay on top, that's going to be great. Now I can work to take his back, right? Or I can work to look for some chokes or guillotines around his neck, okay? If he's standing, it's going to be the same thing. Um, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't stand a lot, stand up a lot from foot on hip guard when someone else is standing because when John anchors his base down, it allows me to go underneath him and lift him up. But it'd be the same thing you just did on the knees and I'm punching this arm. So either I can go around or at least just keep him bent over and look for his leg. So again, we'll slide back a little bit here. Right here. If John's standing and I feel that that weight hunker down, I'm still gonna try and pop away and then up, up and in. Okay. I want to stay heavy, as heavy as I can. Um, it's not an awesome takedown position, but it's a decent enough one to wear somebody down. Okay, so And if he's being stubborn inside your guard, he's probably going to be on the defensive when you get him standing up again. So front hip guard doesn't bode well for standing up and attacking right away because you usually end up pushing the person away from you, but it's pretty easy to stand up if that's what you need to do. And sometimes standing up is just enough, okay? So get the idea of standing up whether he's on his knees or he's standing, okay? Oh yeah guys, so we got a bunch of uh, sweeps for you. We're not gonna show everything, but uh, a little bit of a variety of things to be looking for here. So to get right off the bat, we're gonna start with John standing and we're gonna get into uh, the most satisfying of them all is the balloon. So I have my good tension, okay? When I'm pull, pushing into John, I wanna be able to sit up a little bit. This is gonna help me scoop it underneath. So as I feel John's uh, shift his weight, I don't, if John is leaning into me, it's gonna be very easy to lift him up. So, and that's fine for a balloon, okay? Um, but he's probably gonna defend a little bit, he's gonna squat. You'd be surprised how easy it is to scoop underneath. So if he's doing a squat, I'm gonna release the tension with my legs, but keep the tension in my arms, and I'm just gonna swing underneath. Okay. Now, when you're doing your balloon, um, you need to get that pull with your hands. A lot of times people will just relax the legs and they just kind of relax the arms at the same time. So make sure you get that swing underneath. So not too worried about the follow through. You guys should have to be okay with your balloon. It's just the idea of it. But I see a lot of people have a challenge of just getting underneath. This is a good part to practice is pull hard and then sweep underneath and just get the lift. Getting them up is the hardest part. Putting them down is easy. Just putting them where you want is a little challenging, right? So again, good tension. And then when you're ready to go, relax the legs and go underneath. So he should go in and then up. Uh, just like the drill that we do in class for John Sagan my lapels, and just do this thing, sit and scoop underneath. As I push him away, I'm sitting up, right? And now I'm right underneath him. So keep that in mind. You want to, so you want to be able to sit up a little bit, get that rounded motion. It's going to make it easier for you. Um, it doesn't have to be sitting all the way up like this. You find that this is fine. My shoulders are off the floor, so I have a nice rocking motion when they go in. 
Okay, um, so a balloon, really, really great. Sometimes you get stuck because they're basing well. If they're basing well, then you got a lot of broom sweep variations. So, probably the favorite one for myself is push with the foot, other foot comes in, hand to the foot, and up, and then in. Okay, same thing on the side. I got my grips. I push harder with my right leg to free up my left, swim to the side, heel comes in, grab the foot, push. My foot will drop back and I come forward and I step over the leg. If I don't step over the leg, there's a chance he'll kick this foot or this leg up and then the, it'll get caught here. Enough to slow him, slow me down. This knee's probably gonna start coming in and if I try to push, I can twist John's knee, so I have to be careful. Sometimes flexible guys, flexible guys will put it there and it's easy, they can keep it our, there, no problem. As we get a little stiffer or older or maybe a little bit stronger with our knee, we lose some flexibility and this will start to hurt. So we gotta clear that knee to, to get over top. Okay. Now, if you, don't, if you don't like the idea of going here to that sickle sweep, you can go to the hook sweep, John likes this one, push and then here, okay? And then same thing, push and then up and through. So the idea of the, the sweep is exactly the same. You have tension on the heels or on the legs and, and then you're pushing them backwards. So from here, pushing with the left leg now to free up the right foot. Right foot hooks in, can hook here, can hook here. Grab, push with the foot and then come up, okay? And this is gonna be a little bit of timing of when to pull the foot off the hip on both those ones so you don't end up uh, kind of getting jammed up. Sometimes you jam your own sweep up. Other broom sweeps, the, the classic, just the straight backwards one. So I'm going to sweep John. The, the reason I might go for these is because I'm really stretching them out and it's easy to get these hooks in like this because there's lots of space. But if John stepped in, this is a problem. He's gonna try and scoop my hips up and now I'm gonna get dumped backwards. It puts a lot of strain on my neck. Once my hips are off the floor, that's a problem. I can stop that by when John scoops in, to bring my feet behind them and now look for your classic broom sweep, okay? When you're doing your classic broom sweep, try to put your feet behind their back. It'll stop them from getting away from you. Sometimes they're, they're uh, sneaky guys and they start coming in. If I grab here and push John back, he can butt scoot away before I can get up. He'll defend himself, right? He'll be able to cre create that space. By hooking my feet behind him, it makes it easier for me to follow up to mount and it also makes it harder for him to get away. So he's getting a good base, he's starting to come in. Good, here we go. And then hip up. If he puts this arm up, I don't care. I'm just gonna go through it, maybe take his back and just go straight to mount. So I'm not too worried about what arm John puts up. Uh, I wanna go on the side that I go off best. I know for some people that do the system, uh, calls for the arm bar. But if I come up on this side, with my left hand on the floor as I go up on top of John, if he puts this hand up, I'll go for the arm bar, right, to come around. If that hand comes up, I just go to mount, okay? Maybe triangle, okay? So, uh, broom sweeps. Going into the next one. It's a fun one for the dynamic guys. I gave Ron this one a while ago. Uh, same thing, John starts coming in. Kick that foot off, grab the leg, spin around, and now sweep back, okay? Uh, it's like a rear roll sweep. We showed Ron was one of the smaller dynamic guys in the club and he's doing a pretty good job of pulling this one off to the point where we're getting him to go jump guard, drop down, hook the foot, and then spin, stand up. You can take this into standing all the way up and look for a single leg or kick out the other foot, or you could just do the sweep like I just did. So here John, or John starts to step in, foot comes up and I hook underneath. I roll around and my hips come up. So I'm digging into John's ribs, roll backwards right here. And I'm trapping his leg with my leg but also my hand. So my hand is behind him, and I use my armpit into his knee, and I'll come back, and then just turn to face him. Otherwise, if John was up, as soon as I roll back to this position, I'd be looking to stand up with it, and then kick out that leg, okay? So, uh, if you're looking to stand, I'll do the standing one. Good, John starts to step in, up, now, if you can catch him off balance, great, he'll fall down. If not, you just lift that leg up a little higher and sweep out the other leg and knock him backwards. So, um, when they're standing, a lot of variations to stay within the, the foot on hip guard. Of course, like in the transitions, you might want to move to Delaheva, that's fine. We're just trying to stay 
within the realm of foot on hip guard and not move into other guards for the sweeps. So now John's kneeling. Okay. So, from the knees, I'm actually going to switch sides so it's a little easier for you guys to see. I have my grips and I should be, like a butterfly guard, I should be sitting up a little bit. Although some people are content to stay down here, which is kind of okay. Right? But if you can get up, that's great. Oh, I'm rolling his ankle. Good. Foot on the hip, stretch it out, and look to almost scissor sweep, John. When I get to here, my foot will grab to climb up. Okay. Well, again, I have my foot on hip, I have my collar, stretching John out, foot, stretch it out, and climb back on top. Uh, if John stands up with this leg, it's going to make that one much, much easier. So if I have my foot on hip and he shifts his weight, oh, that's going to be very easy to knock him over. So that's a very, almost a classical style of sweep. The scissor sweep was meant to counter this. This idea of people standing up with one leg to open up the guard. So when the weight comes forward and up, it makes the scissor sweep really, really easy. Same thing for this one. Um, the uh, Master Brand's got a 100% sweep. So from here, I'm going to open up that angle, uh, his elbow with my shin. Foot comes across, so I got both feet on one side. Not necessarily here. I don't want John's elbows in. I want to open that elbow up. I'm going to scoot around to grab the pants, push into them, up, and then sweep. Okay? From the other side, so you can see the pant grip. So this one is typically either guys are playing this kind of grip with the, like a, a spider guard but feeling the hips or the hand on the collar. Right here is what we're looking for. I'm going to grab John's pants and it's nice there's a little fold for me there. If there's not, can you fold this underneath? Make it a little bit tighter. Good. See I can't grab very well. I can push John this way to lighten that leg. Okay, and then just play with the pants a little bit. So here, there, push into them and then up. Punch him to the roof. Really, really fun sweep. Master Brain calls this one the 100% sweep. Things to watch out for. We'll show from this angle. So right here is if John grabs the collar deep or the back of my head, this is going to kill my sweep. It's going to make it much harder. It's going to force me to really try and knock him backwards. Uh, and I also have to be careful he doesn't pass by pushing his hand into my knee and then pass my guard. Uh, it's going to make it much, much harder to sweep him once he's got past. If I have a leg lasso, so I do that push, I can do the exact same sweep as before. And if he passes, there is uh, a chance, if he passes the side mount, there's a chance for a compression lock here. So we have to be careful, but this is something I like to go for anyways, but he should be mindful of his arm. So there is a bit of a backup. Uh, and same thing if we do that leg lasso, and I do sweep John with it. Once we come up on top, there's that same compression. So you, he should be protecting his arm and I should be mindful of bringing my hips up to clear the arm. Uh, for brown belts, it's allowed to do the compression locks. Anybody else, it's not, but you can still use the leg lasso as a sweeping mechanism. So be mindful of that. Uh, it's a great way to, to tie up their arms, okay, that leg lasso. The other uh, thing for it is, if John's grabbing my pants here, usually the leg lasso is meant to go to break the grip and then put that foot in. Okay, so if you're looking for a leg lasso, um, there's a real purpose for it. It's to break the grips off of the pant grips that he might have. John's got a nice sweep that he likes doing. It's called a, it's a Camara sweep. I'm not actually sure what the name is, but he likes doing this one from not only standing as a takedown, but as a sweep itself. So John will show this one. Okay, we can do, we can do this one from open guard. Um, I'm looking for a cross grip, same kind of grip Master Professor Mike was saying. I want my elbow, my hand up high on his elbow. So we can either take my left, my right foot, and I want to pass it here. And I want to dive deep where my left foot is. Deep here. And then keep, you can keep the grip into the, into the sort of a reverse tomorrow. You can also, this one, it almost, Get the same grip. Presser Mike, if I do this, he's gonna to wanna to pass. And as I pass, and as he passes, I can just go deep and then do the roll. 
That's what Mike's kind of forced through all his little shoulder locks put on from the beginning. So. And uh, John's doing a great job keeping my elbow high and passing this hand underneath. It'll get to a point where I can't lift my elbow any higher or he can't lift my arm any higher. And when he gets to that point, that's where he starts sweeping underneath. We want to have straight arms. If you look at my arm, my left arm is going to keep straight. Whoa. So this motion. Here. We don't want to do it this way. He'll collapse into me this way. So a nice sweep from foot on hip guard. It's a nice takedown. It's also can be done from butterfly guard. Half I imagine guard. half guard, a variety of positions. A yeah. good, good move. Uh, we got one more uh, move, and that's where I got foot on hip guard. And uh, so John's got his knees down on the floor, or at least one of them. So if he puts that foot up, I'm looking to do that sweep that we talked about just earlier, kicking the leg. So if he puts this one up, Sometimes he's trying to push this knee into my hamstring and, and bring his elbow in and it kicks my foot off of his hip. Now this is a problem for me. Uh, these grips aren't going to be enough to slow John down. So as soon as that happens, I want to put my foot under his butt. But he's not going to let me do it very easily, which is good for me. So if I find I have to wiggle and wiggle, that's not good. I want to push John back with my right leg. And when I push, I'll start to get that spin, that rotation again. As I rotate, his weight will shift off of his heel and I can pass my foot underneath. As I pass my foot underneath, I'm going to sit up. And now John doesn't want to fall back, so when he tries to come back on top of me, that's when I load him up and then go into the balloon. This is uh, like a low De La Hiva kind of position. It's really, really good. You're going to find some people have a hard time pressing up. You know, sometimes in class you go feet on the hips and do those squats, and that can be a little challenging. Uh, a big key point to this is rocking back to go up. This foot will be hooked underneath, just a second. This foot will be hooked underneath to use as a guide to help kick John up in the air. And this one's gonna press. So almost like a, a clean and jerk, right? You're gonna clean it, and then you're gonna go underneath it to snap it up or snatch, clean, and press, right? Same kind of idea. So I'm here with John. He put that foot up, which cleared that foot off of his hip. I push and I turn and get my foot in. Now I'm sitting up. Now I might be able to start working the Delahiva and go other things if he stays there for too long. So he's gonna to wanna to push back into me. And when he does, that's where I scoop under and then go for my balloon. So I'm here, push, turn, he pushes in. Great, up, whoa. Way in, and then you might have to improvise a little bit, depending <laughs> on where you land. Um, so it's a nice one if you can get your feet underneath. If you can't get your feet underneath, remember, push on the hip to get the weight to shift back. And that'll open up that little pocket here to get your foot in. And they should push back into you, and if they don't, then you have a nice low del heave sweep, okay? Okay, so now we're working at taking the back from foot on hip guard. It's, uh, to be honest, not a position, or not a move I try to do very much. And that's mostly because uh, I got some really nice sweeps I do, or uh, subs I do from foot on hip guard and some good sweeps if the subs don't start working out. Taking the back can be a little challenging because of the space you have between the two of you. But there's a couple opportunities. So we'll go into uh, the first ones if he's standing. I got my grips, I got my pressure. And it's the same thing as the balloon. I push, scoop underneath, lift John up. But now I gotta spin him underneath. Um, this can be challenging if he's holding onto the lapel. So this is probably why you'll see like, well, if I already got him up, why not just dump him this way? But if you can get, break the lapel grip, then you can get a spin and take his back off of it, which is obviously pretty, pretty good. So you can push here, up, break that grip, and then just all you're doing, all I'm doing is pulling this foot out. All his weight's on this foot now, and he will drop into that void and just catch him in the rear mount. It's not, uh, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever done it. I always like to go for balloons because it's a lot more fun but the grip of the gi will make it, make it a bit of a challenge. So if you are able, when you stretch them out to break that grip, and then you come up, it makes it pretty easy to start going for his back, okay? Uh, you'll notice he fell to this side, he went onto my leg. If I feel his weight fall onto this leg, I don't wanna just let it fall to the groin, ground, that could hit my groin. Uh, also, he'll start to get away from my rear mount, so that's why you would sit up to face him. So if he falls on that side, you're gonna, fall, you're gonna roll to that side as well. Um, Nice, I don't really want to get into it because we're going to do another section later on Del Hiva. But if you start pushing and that foot's really in front, you can always go hook the foot, straighten the leg out, and take the back off Del Hiva. Um, 
Dalla Viva is awesome for taking the back. There's a, it's a really, really easy one to do. If you got short legs, it's, it's fine. You get nice hooks to go around. If you got long legs, you can really stretch them out. So one more time, we'll go on this angle so they can see. From here, dive underneath, foot comes in and we're grabbing, okay? Stretch out and push if you need to. Foot comes in the pocket. I need to spin around John to grab his hips uh, or I'll, uh, I'll let him turn around. I'm pinching here, pulling back, and then both feet come in. John uh, did remind me of a good one that we for I forgot about, and that's javelin. Okay, so from here, if I feel John's trying to clear this leg, this could be a problem for me, so when he goes to clear it, pull his head to the ground and jump on his back. Um, javelin can be a nasty one. It's uh, usually it's because he's starting to pass your guard and he's getting past this leg, pull him straight to the ground. So you gotta watch your partner, you don't spear them at the ground. The idea of a javelin is you throw the javelin and it lands, point. That's John's head. So it's here and he starts to clear that leg, pull him down, okay? And then start looking to the back. Uh, same thing can be done to the knees. John's on his knees. And I'm here, he starts grabbing my pant legs and he starts to pass. Same thing, okay? You can javelin him. This works now well if he's trying to grab both pant legs. Um, this is a fairly common thing. Sometimes you get like this, almost like an open butterfly guard, and he starts to pass to this side, and then jump onto his back, okay? So javelin from the knees can work just as well as javelin when he's standing, uh, but what you're looking for is commitment from him coming forward on that pass, okay? Uh, if you're looking to, to uh, take his back, while he's on his knees from foot on hip guard. A nice one is when you're pushing is that classic arm drag. Break the grip and just pull. Now as I pull, I gotta take this leg out because I'm just gonna catch him. So I break the grip and pull and bring my leg in. As this leg comes in, kind of open up his guard a bit and then kick the other leg in. So, um, sorry, open up his base. So I'm trying to kick that leg back a little bit to open him up. Makes it easier to get my other foot in and it'll drop his hips down a bit or stretch his back out a bit. So from here, I want to break that grip, pull in, as soon as I come around this foot, it's there. This motion, right, like that. If he does manage to go belly down right away, hooks go inside, okay? So this will help stretch him out a little bit until you can get your other hooks in. Uh, one more time, other side. Feet on hips, break that grip, pass. Foot comes in right here, okay? If you need to open it up more, grab that armpit and then kick this knee back here. Now you might have to drop your other hook on top and get the other one here. For John, there's not too much movement he can do. He's turning his hip this way because it's a little more comfortable for him. If he tries to get back to his posture, hooks come in, hooks come in right away, okay? So um, from the knees, you'll see that just, there's a couple things that get done within the framework of a, a foot on hip guard. Otherwise, you're kind of moving into like a spider guard or an X guard or a Deli Hiva guard and attacking the back from there. And that's kind of a different topic. We want to stick within the, the realm of foot on hip guard if we can. Okay? All right, guys. So now subs uh, from foot on hip guard. Man, there's lots. We're not going to be able to sheet teach everything by, by any means. Uh, I'll get through some basic ones that we should you should be aware of and uh, demo a couple moves that maybe if you already know the basics, you can move on to some of the more uh, interesting ones or maybe because your other ones are falling apart a bit. Um, so first one we go is John standing. Foot on the hip guard. This is always a sneaky one for people. If you have good tension, this arm should be pulled up quite a bit. All I have to do is take this knee and push it into John's elbow and then Turn. I'm not so much doing this. Some people like to do this. If he lets go of my McGee, you're not doing this with the arm. I'm taking my torso and moving my whole core to the side. I know some people like to try and bend the arm or sorry, just push it sideways with their hand and, and for sure it works. But now it's muscle versus muscle, right? Uh, well, if I'm using my back, I'm using muscle too. But if I can get a good tension here and then just turn. Oh, this is so easy. It's just, it is one of the easiest ones to, to pull off. 
Um, what I really, really, really like about this is if we move back a little bit, is because I love balloons. I used to have problems with balloons uh, for a while until I got better at scooping underneath. Well, if I do this to John, he's gonna wanna try and bring his elbow, he'll turn his thumb up and elbow in. But when he does this, okay, so when you turn, he pulls himself forward, which makes it so easy for me to lift him up. So he's kind of giving up the arm bar to get ballooned. Uh, and at least it should play out that way. And it's really, really easy when the, to pull off, even if he's on his knees, if John's on his knees, same thing. I'm gonna stretch him out to here, and there's my arm bar. And for him to, to counter it, he's really gotta try and come forward. I can still dig with that knee and pop it up. So just because he brought his elbow in, um, I didn't want to look to lift because he's really trying to back out. And if he's trying to back out, I don't want to try and go for a balloon. I won't get it. So he's bringing his elbow in. I just use my knee to kind of scoop to the spot that I'm looking for. So very much like when you do a reverse arm bar, John loves the reverse arm bars. He just finds an elbow and rolls it around, right, with his hand. It's the same thing I'm doing with my knee. When I'm here, if he brings that elbow in, just, oh, there you go. Okay, again, he brings his elbow in, push that leg, find it with my knee, and there you go. If it bends, well, now we're starting to go for Uaplatas, right? So a lot of people will try to either turn their elbow in, which means their hips are coming forward, you can balloon them over, or they're gonna try and turn their elbow out, which means Uaplata. So that's, their, that's what they're doing to save their arm, okay? So be mindful of that. The Uaplata is there. If you're a fan of Uaplatas, then that can work pretty well. Also, from here, all you have to do is, there you go. I'm just taking my knee and I'm pushing it on the, on the inside of his tricep kind of to, to guide his elbow out. If I like him Uaplatas, I'll guide it out. There we go, foot comes in. And go for your Uaplatas, okay? Uh, triangles, of course, are incredibly common. Same thing, oh sorry, if John's standing, same thing goes for the Uaplatas here, right? It's the same, nothing changes. So a lot of these you'll see kneeling, standing, doesn't matter, it's gonna work the exact same way. Just modify it for a little bit of the space and a little bit of where his weight is, but for the most part, they should play out the same. Foot on hip for triangles, same idea. I'm pushing, foot goes to his shoulder or his bicep and then cut in for your triangle or arm bar, right? Or even triangle arm bar. So as soon as you start hitting things like triangle and arm bar from guard, it branches off everywhere, right? If John is standing, we're gonna face this way. Kind of an important thing, if you're gonna try and triangle someone who's standing, you can't just go push, push, and then kick your leg over. There's way too much space. So when you're pushing and you push, I need to climb my hips up. And I'm doing that by pushing into John's hip. Then once I get my bite, then I can start crossing my legs up. So it's really important. I push on this leg to get this motion. It's like a single, single leg bridge. So a lot of people tend to uh, jump or just throw their legs up hoping they'll catch it. Uh, and that's kind of the crux of the long leg guys. You guys have the triangle legs. Initially they get it because they can just open their guard and triangles happen because their legs just scoop everything up. And then they get uh, go against guys that are better and they realize they're not moving their hips the way they should. So you got the tension from the bicep. Once I'm ready to go, I kick that leg off and now there's my bridge. Okay, I'm pushing into my foot. Catch up as best I can, and then go into your triangle. Okay. Um, standard move from the knees or from, uh, uh, or if he's standing. One more move from standing. This is a, a nice counter. If he starts bringing his foot in, there, here. Drop your knee in, and you got your knee bars. Okay. Uh, knee bars catch a lot of guys off guard. You gotta kinda of be careful. So you're going here. He starts bringing that foot in, or, or if he's got this leg in front again, or you spin and you turn your leg in. Okay, so now I change my feet to almost this position like the broom sweep, okay, where the toes are behind on both sides. If you are gonna have the foot on the hip on this side, you gotta really turn in. As soon as you get to here, hips go up. Okay, so there's that bridge again, and you're looking for your, for your knee bar. Um, I prefer knee bar with a big toe beside my ear, but a little toe over the ear is not, not bad either. In the progressive system, we do that, where John lifts my feet up and passes through, and this kind of deal, boom, whoop, 
Uh, it's the same idea, passing that in. If I go for an arm bar on John, more of the classic, and I come up and I arm bar, and he's, I see this leg, say he's defending by hooking his arms together, drop the knee in, and now here's your, your arm or your knee bar entrance. So the knee bar is a, a nice counter to uh, the arm bar counter, okay? So if he's stacking me up and I'm worried about losing that arm bar, I can spin underneath and go for the knee bar. Uh, you can do it off a failed triangle too if he's stacking you up. It's a little trickier from the triangle, but definitely, definitely possible. Um, it's a fun one if you like hunting for legs. So knee bar is purple belt, I believe, okay? That doesn't mean you can't do them as a white belt or blue belt, just make sure you have control. And uh, the big one that people get a little, uh, sensitive about if white belts are doing them uh, to you is one like if you no one wants a white belt going on your legs because you don't want to tap just in case but it's also the the control issue right if they have that experience and the control and they understand yes this is how the move works and this is what my opponent might do and here's the dangers where they might move into another knee bar or something else and hurt themselves as long as they have that experience i don't mind if they're looking for the legs it's just be nice if i knew that i felt comfortable with their experience i wouldn't have a problem with it um from when John's on his knees, we got a couple other moves that we uh, we haven't addressed yet. So actually, we'll go this way. So foot on hip. You always, always, always have a chance to go for that cross choke. So if John's trying to pull this arm in, you can always look to sit up and look for your choke, or look for your chokes. Um, those that have been playing with cross chokes know they're not always easy as as they uh, appear to be. The rash guard does jam up the finger sometimes, but usually it's the guy's experience, right? He knows what to look out for, so he's gonna have, you're gonna have a bit of a challenge with it. So that's why arm bars and triangles look a little bit better, but I'm still working John's collar. He starts pulling that in, I can look to scooch in, but I really gotta snap that choke up. If my grip's low, and I like having a lower grip because it's less threatening to John, when he brings that arm in, it makes it easy to start going for loop chokes, okay? Whoop, and uh, you can get sweeps off the loop chokes, but it's a, it's a, definitely a fun choke. If you like loop chokes, uh, sorry, if you like chokes from guard, a loop choke is definitely one that you should be aware of. Um, I believe in the butterfly section, we do it as well. Uh, all I'm looking for is John's head to be down so I can get my arm underneath his chin, fold my arms, and try to keep that leg out and go over his shoulder to finish the choke, okay? Uh, one thing I do, like about loop chokes is if you two kind of botch it and he manages to pinch your feet to the floor and John starts passing to, this, to his uh, right side, that would be the good side for him, you can get the loop choke from here. John has to roll to get out of it, which allows me to get on top. So sometimes uh, you'll get guys that pass to the wrong side and you can put them into that loop choke. So again, if I'm here with John and then he starts playing with my feet and he breaks his grip and pinches my feet down and I can get him to run to this side, I can either roll him or if he just stays on his belly and goes to side mount, and he just goes to side mount here, I can get the choke on John there. It does take a little yeah, five to eight, maybe 10 seconds for it to sink in if they go into side mount, but there is a shot at it. So it's a, I, I would say a fairly reasonable move to be going for. It's gonna force the guy to roll out of it. Most of the guys don't understand what's happening because loop chokes just kind of get messed up in people's heads and they'll stay inside on and tap to it. So it's a good one to look for if you, if you like it. You can also, as soon as you get into loop chokes, you got a ton. Oh, I'm right. You're here. That, again, that elbow's coming in. Good. Push away, pop, and spin. Okay, so uh, your spinning loop chokes is, you know, that's kind of getting into like stand and attack right away kind of a deal. And again, same thing as butterfly guard. Um, I find it slightly easier from butterfly guard, but from foot on hip guard, it's definitely very effective. Um, we got another one to show where it's, uh, it's a little bit more dynamic, involves some spinning. And John, inside his foot on hip. Here, I go for that leg lasso and break his grip. And then I roll underneath John to spin to a triangle. Um, I used to do this a lot. There's a couple different places to do it from, whether you got your, your double grips, or you can even cross grip if you can manage to get it. But it's push, foot comes in, foot goes out, upside down, turn, cross, whoop, and he's falling a little bit, and then triangle. Then I just gotta let go of that grip so I don't uh, jam myself up. So one more time, 
Get it from here. Break that grip. You got that leg lasso and then you just roll. Okay. If you have a, those triangle legs, nice long, luxurious legs, this one is pretty nice. You can start getting spin underneath people. Usually if your legs are long and slender, your torso is slender, which means going upside down is pretty, pretty easy for you guys. So nice one. I used to do that one a bunch in competition. And then again, a little bit of weight came on and uh, wasn't as, as fun as it used to be. So spinning, lots of stuff is the idea. From foot on hip guard, you should be able to stretch your partner out really, really well. Um, it's really easy to keep their posture broken, which is gonna be a key to a lot of the subs. When they start getting their posture back, that's when you're starting knocking them backwards or attacking them in a way that ends them up moving backwards. So uh, submission from foot on hip guard, great place to be.